back everyone. Today I'm getting stuck into the turbo manifold. Uh, so I'm going to do this as cheap as possible once again, because that's how I do everything. Uh, I'm gonna run over costs a little bit on this probably, just what I've spent and what it's gonna cost me to do it. Um, I mean, obviously you can buy turbo manifold pretty cheap these days, probably for like a thousand or 1200 bucks or something. Um, but this turbo manifold is probably, uh, I don't know, it only cost me maybe 350 bucks maybe to make it. All right, so we've got a head flange. Um, I bought that off eBay maybe. Uh, I think it was eBay. Uh, 70 bucks I reckon delivered. So 12 mil flange when you're making a turbo manifold, if you're gonna do it this way. Uh, the key is to buy the thickest flanges you can because if you are welding it, it's probably going to warp. And if you get it faced and you say get a two mil warp in it, so then you're gonna to have to machine it down somewhere uh, to 10 mil. So obviously the thicker the better, but I have in the past made flanges from 16 mil and that's probably the ideal thickness. Um, but yeah, this is about all I could find. So uh, as you can see here, I have Replaced all the studs. These top ones are just wound in a couple couple turns because I'm going to have to take some of them out for ease uh, of welding and yeah, just working things out. The stock studs on this are actually quite long. So I've put shorter studs in it. Uh, they are 10 by 1.25 thread. Um, always test fit everything. This flange was not quite perfect, uh, a couple of the holes were too tight, so, um, and such a long flange. I think RB30 is a common for it, where they'll, on their, when they heat, they expand and contract and they'll snap your studs. Um, so yeah, I ended up having to drill two of these holes out to 12 mil, so the rest are 11 mil, just to make sure it is nice and loose on the head there. What else have I got here? So I've got, uh, I think I ordered 20, 20 90 degree bends and maybe a dozen uh, 45s and a couple meters of steam pipe. Um, so one and a half inch. So this is where me being cheap comes into it again. So one and a half inch, which is bigger than you want. Uh, you probably want to make something like this out of one and a quarter. Uh, I bought these for, I reckon it was about five or six bucks a bend. Uh, because they're inch and a half, they're on special. They're actually half price uh, compared to inch and a quarter, which was, yeah, like 12 or 13 bucks a bend. So already saved money there. Cha-ching. Two one meter pieces of same thing, one and a half inch uh, steam pipe. I reckon they were 35 bucks each, 35 bucks a meter. So two meters of that, 70 bucks. I don't know what that was. I'll have to work them, that price of that out. And, and uh, yeah, those bits of uh, steam pipe, turbo, $199. And I quickly touched on this last video. This turbo is very large, so it's way overkill, way, way overkill for this. Obviously, RB30, three liter, and that is a 76 mil turbo. So it's too big, but who cares? She'll be all right. Might make boost at 5,000 RPM, but doesn't matter. Good to go. From here, uh, so I have actually gone ahead a little bit and I made up a uh, collector. So that's my collector that I made. I was impatient and I didn't want to wait for the rest of this to come. And I had 600 mil of, uh, of steam pipe left over from something else I'd made. So I cut, uh, yeah, six of these out at 100 long uh, to make this while I had a bit of free time. And I mean, I probably should have waited. I probably could have done with a little bit longer collector, uh, like a little bit longer merge there, um, just because the where the wastegate is coming off of is probably not the most ideal spot, but I'll, uh, I'll find out the hard way how this is gonna work. So worst case, I'll just put another wastegate on it or I will, I don't know, put an internal wastegate turbo on it or something, but it should be right. We'll get there. Uh, so first job, 
All right, I'm rambling again already. Sorry, in advance. Let's put that in the right way to start with. So first job here is to bolt that to the turbo, try and sit it roughly where we want it, um, and then tack, uh, tack a rod between this flange probably and this flange in a couple places. Um, and then I can start working out where some, uh, where some pipes go. So obviously if you're doing a turbo manifold like this at home, the key is to remember uh, what else has to go in there. So in this case, I've got to fit an external wastegate, obviously the turbo, um, a dump pipe. I'm only putting a three inch dump pipe in it because that will flow enough to make 500 horsepower for now. But I want to leave room for a four inch dump pipe in case one day the inevitable happens and I want to make more power than I should. Uh, you've also got to take into account uh, oil drain for the turbo, oil feed for the turbo and not in this case because my cheap turbo that I bought uh, is oil cooled and it doesn't have uh, any coolant lines going to it, but you do have to keep that in mind too, obviously. Big old turbo here. We'll sit in there somewhere. I was actually going to put a 3582 uh, on it, which is a um, XR6 turbo. So obviously they're off of a four liter, so plenty Plenty big enough. And to be honest, the eBay listing that I bought this off was a bit sketchy on sizes of things. Uh, but I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, the worst that can happen is too big a servo rocks up and yeah, well, shit happens. Anyway, stop rambling. And uh, yeah, today's video is probably gonna involve a few time lapses just because, yeah, things take a lot of time when you're doing this sort of fab work, so. Uh, gonna jump into a few time lapses, just getting um, maybe the first couple pipes in, and we'll see how we go. tacked into place uh, so I've just tacked those rods in um, to the flange so from the head flange to the T4 turbo flange that rod and that rod so I weighed up a lot of things here before I made this decision uh, probably the main one being clearance because I'm cheap and I bought one and a half inch bends uh, she's gonna be pretty tight in here but that's nothing we can't deal with Another thing uh, to keep in mind, as well as everything being really tight in here because of these bends, uh, you wanna be able to get to all these studs. Just things to keep in mind if you're doing this at home. Uh, so what I'm gonna do from here is measure some clearances. So clearance to the chassis rail from the collector there, clearance to the block from there, uh, because what I'm actually going to do is, I'm gonna do probably a couple of the hardest ones. Uh, not sure which one yet, but maybe some of the ones, one behind the turbo and maybe the front one or something. Um, but I'm gonna actually take it out of the car. So now that I've tacked it like that, I'm gonna chuck it up on the bench here and start working out uh, where everything's gonna go. And then I'm just going to yeah get a couple tacked into place, put it back in the car, see if it's all good, make sure I've got clearance still and then rinse and repeat basically until we have six runners tacked into place. I'm going to tick the majority of this uh, manifold, but I'm going to tack it all together with the MIG uh, just because it's yeah time consuming, if not. Um, oh, what else, what else, what else? So I took into account as well, obviously I want to have a dose pipe on this and I think the best uh, dose pipe that I can make for it is four inch down to three inch reducer here and then uh, straight piece of pipe so I just wanted to make sure that I could fit that in there uh, obviously it's not going to be a bend but a straight bit of pipe something like that so and also while I've got that bend 
we want to make sure we can fit a dump pipe in it. So there's going to be enough clearance. These are extended leg bends. Uh, that's a short leg or normal. Um, so I'll work out whether I'll use that one or this one. Um, that will sit there like so. And then I've got a wastegate that will sit down in here too. So because this is an external wastegate turbo, so we've got to squeeze one of them in somewhere too. Obviously, this is also something to take into account when you're uh, making something like this. If you want to, if you have a set budget, obviously it would be cheaper to build something like this with a internal gate turbo because you don't have to spend the you know larger sum on like obviously the turbo only cost me 200 bucks but a wastegate a decent wastegate you want to be actually be able to control that boost uh yeah a decent wastegate six or seven hundred bucks but luckily i have one sitting here that i'm going to use uh that i have borrowed off uh, my mate nick because he is not currently using it so it's gonna yeah i'm gonna use it to work out placement of everything and yeah see where see where we're at there So we're making decent progress here. It, uh, yeah, it's come along decent, I reckon. Probably the trickiest part was, or is going to be, so this one that's very close uh, to everything here, I've had to like shorten it and pie cut it a bit sort of thing. This one here is gonna be the same. That one uh, will come out and up into that one. So a 90, probably a straight, a 90, and then maybe half of 45 maybe, see how that one looks. Uh, this one will be very similar, but I'll probably do uh, this one first, I reckon. So that one will come uh, out and down a little bit to get back into this one. So probably a 90, 45, 
90 and then another 45 to get back into there. Something like that. You can see it's very much just a uh, jigsaw puzzle putting it together. So, but it's all coming along quite good. Don't worry about these ugly tacks. They'll all be ground off once I, uh, when I fully weld it. So when I fully weld it, I'll cut the tacks on there and cut the tacks on there and then I'll uh, TIG the whole thing and then put it back on and weld that one back on and weld that one back on. But when I do get to that point, I'll run through it a little bit more, but this flange will need to be clamped or bolted so that it doesn't warp. Um, it's not too bad warpage on uh, welding a manifold like this because it's not like a log manifold where there's no nowhere to get that tension out of it sort of thing. Uh, and especially when you're only welding one on at a time sort of thing, you can make sure that the, the flange is staying square and straight. Yeah, we're getting there though. So I'm probably not going to do that one next, I don't think. So that one will be, and then something like that. But yeah, I might start on these front three so I can work out where they're going. Like I said, I know this one here, where it's going and what it's gonna do, it has to clear, has to clear that, has to clear that one that's coming out of there. So wherever that ends up, I'm not sure, uh, but it will, something like, something like that. It will clear. It's tight, but you know, we're getting there. Also something like this takes me like a couple days to do it. I'm sure people that work for six boosts and that knock one of these out before smoke or after smoke or and after lunch. So three a day or something, but not me. Just, uh, yeah, slaving away at it. spaghettis make a pretty good progress yeah we're pretty well almost all tacked up so I've got a couple little where are you running off to sit stay uh, so I've got a couple cuts to make to get that last one in there uh, I've got to um, make piece for that one, a straight piece, a straight piece for that one, and a straight piece for that one. Uh, so I'm going to cut some up. I didn't want to make a racket because I'm just cutting all this with a drop saw. Uh, and I didn't want to make a racket last night, so put it off till today. So I left all the straights till today. So I'm about to cut them up and get them tacked in, and then we'll start the weld out. I reckon we're pretty close. It's looking pretty good. Obviously, before we do start the weld out though, we want to Make sure it's going to fit, make sure it's going to clear the chassis rail, the engine mount, and I'm going to sit the power steering pump in here and make sure we've got some clearance there. Because nothing would be worse than bolting it in and then realising that yeah, it doesn't clear something. Uh, I'm also going to uh, suss out the wastegate position. So that's going to sit uh, maybe up here somewhere like this. Um, I'm still 50-50 whether I plumb the wastegate back in or whether I'm going to, uh, yeah, have it straight to atmosphere. So scream with pipe or plumb in. Don't know yet, we'll see. But I'm going to take a two minute break from this video because I need to go drop the Corolla off at Nick's house uh, because I'm going to Motorax next weekend. Um, so if you're in Melbourne and you're going to Motorax, you can actually come for a ride uh, with me in the Corolla, in my Corolla, in my 2J Corolla or with Nick in his V8 uh, LS1 Corolla. 
So we're going to have both of them there doing rides Saturday, Sunday at Motor X with Drift Cadet in Melbourne. So it's at the showgrounds. So should be a good weekend. But yeah, first, first things first, it's got to go to Nick and get some dents knocked out. So Matt Russell thought he was Lance Stroll at uh, Adelaide Motorsport Festival and ran into me. I mean, it might have been 50-50, his fault, my fault. Might have been 20-80, who knows which way. But yeah, I got a dent to fix anyway, so I'm gonna chuck that in the trailer now and run this down to Nick's house. Um, I'll just quickly touch on, seeing as we're on the subject of turbo manifolds, this is the, maybe the last one that I made. So you can see this was a lot tighter, like a lot tighter than the uh, the VN, so sorry about that rust, that's just uh, that's just turbo and E85 and everything mixing together. Um, yeah, so this is very tight, so I'm no stranger to uh, fitting a turbo manifold in tight places. So, so this next weekend, Motor X, Melbourne. We should be able to sit that back in there and you can't quite see it but I can feel that it's not touching the top there see that's where it should sit so it's got a little bit of wiggle room hard to see anyway uh, from here I'm trying to get from there up around a little bit wide uh, so this is sitting square with the manifold so I want to sit I want it to come up probably sort of like this just so it runs like in the same sort of line as this one here. Uh, so come up and around and in. Now, I have prepared an array of bends and stuff. So this is just a 45 cut and a half. So should be roughly 22.5 degrees. Uh, and these are just an assortment of lengths that I've cut. Um, now, there's a little bit more wastage doing it like that, but it's good just to have a bit that you can go you know, I need to put that in there, but it needs to be five mil longer, or I can I can make that work if it's five mil shorter, you know, or something like that. So there's lots of fiddly bits. Anything like this, if you're gonna have a go at it and you haven't done it before, like I've said before, it's just gonna be trial and error. Um, just the more you do, the, the, the by the end of building a manifold, if you got to this point or you finished building a manifold, you'd go, you know what? I know that I can do that better than I've just built it, but that's just learning, so. You'll, uh, yeah, you'll work your way through it. And, um, something like this, to be honest, if you're going to have a go at it, uh, I'd probably just buy one of the cast collectors. Um, you can pick them up pretty cheap now. I think brands like Aeroflow and stuff do them. Don't quote me on the quality, but um, like a cast collector, without a doubt, that's the hardest part to make. Uh, and then just, yeah, it's just a jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle putting it all together, so... The key is not to put too many tacks on it until you know that uh, like the pipe isn't going to be modified or altered in any way. So I would try and get one uh, or two tacks on each join uh, until the whole manifold is finished. 
and then from there I would go around before I before I cut each runner off to welder, I'd go around and tack it each each join half a dozen times, uh, just so it's not moving. And when you pull it off to welder, it doesn't pull, and then you go to weld it back on, and it's moved five or ten mil. But uh, all right, I'm rambling. Sorry, guys. From here, what I'm going to try and do is work out what I need uh, clearance wise under here. So I know. So that's obviously just a 90, which I'm not going to use. But I just want to make sure that I've got clearance to put a bend in, which I do. There's definitely clearance there. So what I'm going to do is grab a 45 and see where we need to go there. All right, I'm just going to put this camera down and try and film it. All right, let's see how that goes. Uh, because I need two hands here. So... Roughly, that would sit somewhere there, that bend, and then a 45 would clear it. But I want to be able to wrap this next bend right around this pipe nice and close. So I reckon I'm going to drop everything constantly. This is just a 45 that I cut in half. So I'm going to go and put that 90 on there. And then that 22.5 degree bend there. And then I'm going to get a 90 and see how we're looking there. All right, so I think we're in business here. So we, what, what we want to do now is hug that next runner. Uh, and you can kind of see just here, there's a gap of about 15 mil, I reckon. So now I'm going to try and find a piece that is... 15 mil long, and no doubt I don't have one, but I'm gonna to have to chop one up. You gotta be an octopus to make these manifolds. Uh, here's a piece that is 10 mil long, so I can use that to judge what I need. Uh, and I'm gonna say I actually need to cut a piece twice that length, so I need to cut a piece 20 mil long to fit in that gap. Can't really see. Tentacle hands to get in here. So I want this to finish roughly there. You can see there's a 10 mil gap. So that's a 10 mil piece just there. So it actually needs to be double that length to hug that next pipe. I could probably go, like I could make it work, but would it look good? Oh, you know what, I actually might. I might be able to make that work. All right, sorry for the background noise. The welder's on because I'm getting ready to tack this. Uh, and also, sorry for my uh, constant rambling. I'm trying to just get across what I'm thinking as I'm doing everything, so hopefully it is actually coming across as uh, as something and not just ramble. Bear with me, we'll get there. So I'm just going to tack that 10 mil piece on the end of that uh, 90 degree bend, so I can just test it. Got the old safety squint going. But yeah, you can see uh, what I meant by trial and error here because yeah, it is just, try that, nope, try that, nope. All right, let's see how we go, nope. Sorry, I got my fat head in the way, I'm just, uh, I need a few more eyes and hands in this instance. All right, after lots of fiddling around, I've got that piece tacked in uh, roughly on the right angle, in the right spot, so that I can fit this one just here. And then, now that I don't need uh, two hands to hold those bits, I can work out uh, what's going on out here? So I reckon we're going to go something like that, or we're going to do two 45s, or we could go like 
that, but then it's not quite going to match that one. So we may go. We may do that. Maybe. So 90 with a couple bits in there. Or. It's gonna look better. She's tacked on. As you can see, lots of trial and error. So hold a piece there, is it gonna work, is it not? Guess the distance to the next uh, piece that you need to put in. Uh, yeah, it's just a whole, whole lot of uh, messing around basically, but as long as you get there in the end, that's all that matters. Maybe 245s and then I'll just turn that bend a bit. Yeah, we're getting there. SpaghettiOs. Yeah, turned out pretty good, I reckon. All right, moment of truth. Let's have a test fit and see what it looks like. All right, what do we need to modify? So, Pretty much what I was thinking. I think I'm gonna to have to take that lip off the chassis rail. Uh, I might be able to modify it to get around it, but I think we're pretty close otherwise. Oh, yeah, it's just just that one, which we may just shuffle it. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, decent, decent, decent. So she's got clearance to the rail. Doesn't look like much there, but uh, like there's a fair amount down there. It, uh, yeah, I'm gonna clean up these. Obviously I just bash it down with a hammer, but I'm gonna clean it up. Uh, that's like the factory bend in the rail like the to clear something that's there on the engine uh so i'm going to do the rest of it like that i reckon we'll clean her up when the engine's out but yeah from here on pretty much i'm going to one by one uh, remove each runner and weld it 
I'll clamp it back on the bench and we'll uh, tig her up. But yeah, she's turned out pretty good, I reckon. Pretty good. So one other bit that I still have to work out with this engine is uh, it's going to run an Istune. And so Nistunes have to run an airflow meter. Uh, so I have to run either a Z32 to make the power that I want or a, the best option is probably an R35 airflow meter just because it's a little insert and I can just run whatever intake pipe I want and run it in there. Uh, but I reckon I do have a Z32 here. Um, and I talked to uh, Anthony uh, who is tuning the car and he said he'd rather... Uh, a Z32, they're a lot, lot better to tune with and stuff, so um, the problem with Z32 is 3 inch, 4 uh, inch intake, so we will have to do some trickery there, or uh, I have done it before on my Corolla, I used to run in this tune when it was SR20, and I had uh, the airflow meter in the cooler piping, uh, so that is another option, but I'll work that out uh, yeah, I'll work that out when we start doing intercooler piping. Um, what's next on this? What's next? What's next? Uh, stay. Probably going to cut the uh, intake up so I can start doing the forward facing part of that. And yeah, exhaust, everything. Uh, like I just said, I'm not going to film probably welding this out because it is going to be quite time consuming, so I'll kind of pick this up here uh, in next week's video, and we'll, uh, yeah, I'll have finished that at least. Um, but yeah, from here, uh, dump pipe's gonna fit in there nicely, I reckon. And that will fit in, I don't know, in here somewhere. Depends where I want to, maybe there like that, something like this. I don't know. We'll work that out. But yeah, I'm probably going to finish fully welding it, I think, before I put that on. Uh, so I'll finish fully welding it, dump pipe, and then we can work that out. Uh, as well as intake. Um, pretty sure I've got some. Although, to get my max dose, I'm not going to run a... a uh, air filter but uh yeah just in case i'm gonna make it so that an air filter will fit so that will sort of sit in there this is just an old one off the corolla like i said this car getting built by hand-me-downs needs to cost as little as possible i guess one other thing i'll touch on will be cost so 20 uh 90 degree bends and i only use what's left there one two three four five so i only use 15 but i do need one or two extra to finish off the uh, wastegate plumbing. I've got one, I ordered 12 and I've got one uh, 45 left. Uh, and they were $210, so 210 plus 70 for a head flange, plus 70 for, that's a zero, uh, two meters of uh, steam pipe and 30 for a head, uh, T4 flange, sorry. Uh, so what's that? A hundred and two eighty, three hundred and eighty dollars total. So, uh, obviously, um, you got to take into account time to do it and stuff. But three hundred and eighty bucks for that manifold, decent, I reckon. Like I said, I still have to finish welding it. Um, going to start now, and we'll finish her off at the start of next week's video, probably before I get stuck into the dump pipe and everything. I, uh, I know it's the case for me, I'm not sure about for other people, but a lot of these things wouldn't be possible if I didn't, uh, I didn't make all this stuff myself. So I definitely wouldn't be able to, yeah, afford to do what I do um, if I didn't uh, make everything, or at least have a go at making everything myself. So one upside to it, I suppose. I also have some more cool news. Uh, we finally have a website uh, up and running. Uh, so if you yeah, click the link above here, or I'm going to check the link below. It is klingbergmotorsport.com.au. Uh, and for now, we just have some shirts and stickers for sale. Uh, so some shirts like so. And uh, yeah, some stickers. And uh, I'm working on uh, pretty soon I'll have hoodies up. 
I'll have hats up and some other bits and pieces. So, uh, yeah, everything, uh, everything that I sell uh, will be going back into the channel. Make sure you check out klingbergmotorsport.com.au uh, and see what we have there. Uh, possibly, uh, I'll possibly take some shirts to MotorX in Melbourne as well. So if you're going to MotorX in Melbourne next weekend, uh, May 4th and 5th, uh, in Melbourne at the showgrounds, uh, yeah, I'll possibly see you there otherwise. I'm also approaching 3,000 subscribers, so I reckon we can get there this week. I'm up to 2,900 and in the 30s. Uh, so if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button because it will be uh, greatly appreciated. So almost there, almost at 3,000. So thanks everyone for that, but thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.